Hi, folks. Welcome to Hitting the Mark with Harry and Mark. Today, I'm joined by my wonderful friend, Harry, my wonderful co-host, my loyal confidant, whose name, full name, I did not totally disclose in a previous recording of this <laughs> intro with a great musical number. <clears throat> How are you, Harry? I'm doing great. How are yourself? <laughs> I did not stick that landing. I mm. am. Yes. You'll never get the chance to hear my wonderful, wonderful pipes. That's true. Only Harry. God damn it. Folks, we're two idiots who love talking about shit. We have no idea what we're talking about. I am joined by Harry. Hi. <laughs> I was going to repeat everything that I just said, but I'm not going to because I am an idiot. Harry. Yes. How was your week? My week uh, was way more um, full of uh, events than my previous weeks. Oh. Oh. Please oh. do tell. I will tell. All right. And you're going to listen. You're going to listen. Good. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> all right. Um, so work related. Um, we're going to be down two technicians so it's going to suck um like permanently or uh no not permanently but uh we're going to be down two technicians so it means more work for me um nice. um and uh that's done with work uh and i started playing two new games and i watched oh. a movie uh i'm talking about the oh. movie first yeah so I finally got to sit down and watch Don't Look Up. Oh, nice. Yeah. What did you think of it? Um, I liked it. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I saw the ending coming. It was obvious. Part but it was still so really good. You know. um, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was, um, I don't know, it was a good, like, oh, yeah, that's, um, like, there is a lot of like like obvious like details of like oh hey that reminds me of this in the real world kind of thing you know what i mean yeah like, and uh, you know an impending geological and planetary disaster that everyone seems to be ignoring one another over mm -hmm. yeah exactly so you know, i almost missed that part too yeah <laughs> um so that was cool um i really liked it um i liked because like uh Liv and i were talking how like you know it's just how we feel sometimes with certain things like you know everyone looks at you like you're crazy and you're just like how is everyone not freaking out right panicking now? Yeah. the fuck yeah yep <laughs> i hear you so it's cool that like value that's there's out. a there's a movie out there that represents how we feel sometimes like they they get it and um i was telling livy um that um there was a it was like a quick video that uh neil degrasse tyson posted up i think on twitter or something and he was like saying that don't look up seems more like a documentary you know <laughs> and i'm like yeah yeah that's that's true like there's definitely parts where you're like, yeah, that that's um, that's that's actually happening, <laughs> you know. I feel like it. I I feel like satire comes to mind, but like the fact that the world is ending mm -hmm. uh, makes it kind of weird satire. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. I liked it. Um, on and the games I started. So I actually. So this is this game's called Comic Crash 2. Um Comic Crash 2. Yeah. So the first Comic Crash came out on the PS3. Um and I adored it. So it's a turret defense game with a twist. It's a oh. It's a turret defense game that you also have to be on the offensive. So for you to win, it's not about making sure you don't lose, it's about defending yourself and also creating your own troops to attack your uh, opponent. Mm -hmm. So, um, interesting. 
Yeah. Um, and it's called Comet Crash because the the maps are based on a ma- on on a comet, and little meteorites float around, and you have to use your like. Because you plant down turrets and bombers and lasers and stuff like that, right? And uh, whatever shoot, whatever uh, hits air, because there's airborne units. So the, there's meteorites that are airborne, and you you and you have to like destroy them to get currency, and you use that currency to, uh, you know, place whatever you want to place down, and then also to, uh, um, uh, upgrade units and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and you. So you know how usually in, in turret defense games, there's kind of like a path that the enemy takes, right? It's like, oh, here's this path. You can build around it and, you know, uh, destroy the, uh, the enemy units, whatever. This one's kind of right. like, this is their base. This is your base. You can kind of build your own maze path thing with your um your uh structures so you can kind of make like a really made like long maze so it takes them longer to get to your base right um and because you're building it with your structures there your structures are attacking them as they're getting there so it's kind of like the end there's like there's a lot of strategy behind it um but once you get the hang of it you get the hang of it and it's fun i really love the first one and i was trying to um show our friend peter um um, the game, right? I was like, oh, I wonder if they have it on the PS4. And then that's when I saw Comic Crash 2. I was like, holy shit, they have a part two. <laughs> so yeah, I See? got super I got super good stoked things, on it. Good things do come back. Yeah. Oh um, I I got uh I got stoked. I got super hooked on it. Um it's my new game to play when, when Livy's busy with other stuff. Um, nice. the other game I played, uh, was Resident Evil Zero. Peter wanted to, uh, started, cause remember, uh, uh, I was playing the original Resident Evil remake, um, with him. Mm-hmm. So this time he said, all right, Harry, we're going to start another Resident Evil game and you're going to beat it. I'm like, okay. And we were going to do either the remake of Resident Evil 2 or uh uh code veronica um but i was like oh what if we do resident evil zero like it's kind of like it's it's, it is the prequel since i played the original like you know resident evil like let's do the prequel and then we'll once we beat that we'll move on to part two and then from there you know maybe part three and you know kind of go chronologically um yeah so kind of like even though we started off not chronologically, you know, it, we were just off by one. So I think, I think we're yeah. okay. So I, yeah, you know, I think I'll forgive you. For that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I didn't, we didn't play too much of it, but, uh, I'll say that I did play this game when it first came out over a decade ago for the GameCube. Um, and, uh, so it's been a while. <laughs> um, but I do, I completely forgot that it's a, uh, it's a, I don't know what to call a it. Resident Evil game. It's a Resident Evil game. No, it, you get to play two players so you can transition from one player to another. So the puzzles might take two players. So you have to like use one or not player, sorry. Um, uh, one character to do one thing while, and then you make the other character do another thing. Ooh, so you that flip. sounds really obnoxious for a game that came out in the early 2000s yeah <laughs> so um it was uh interesting um it was all right uh but i i it took it's taking me a minute to get used to it but i think once i'm playing more and more of it i'll get used to it it's just the first uh-huh. time going around i was like oh i totally forgot that this is a thing <laughs> um so but yeah so th- that's the games that I started. Um, and that's basically been my week. Harry, so I have to ask Mark. Busy, busy bear. How was your week? Harry, my week was the same 
it's always been mm, mm-hmm. amazing. It's good. Like teleporting to another planet and saving its Martian population and becoming its king. Great. You know? Yeah. 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 I do. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Uh, fuck. How do I compete with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in the new Supreme court pick. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Ketanji Jackson Brown seems to be a very well qualified. Well, I wouldn't have a criteria for that because I don't know because I'm a fucking judge or a legislator. Um, mm-hmm. Ketanji Jackson Jackson Brown seems to be a, a judging from the the kinds of law and the fields that she's been in, seems to be probably the most qualified person. And that isn't the focal point of what interests me the most. It's mm-hmm. like the uh the weird like wow you're such a great lawyer why do you like child porn argument that everyone seems to be making about her which i find kind of weird yet fucking uh lindsey graham madison cawthorn no uh wrong asshole the other one doesn't matter they're, yes. they're republican they're all the same uh, going up and like, you know, I, I had a wonderful time getting to know you. You know, you're really great. I have the utmost respect for you. Uh, why are you light on sex offenders? Just, yeah, just a thought, you know, because I really, re- really respect you, you know. You have Lindsey Graham coming up. You know, the last time we did this uh, hearing with Judge Kavanaugh, we all got spat on. So I don't want none of that because you're black. You know, that fucking shit. And then Ted mm-hmm. Cruz getting in with the banger what if i just decide to be asian so it's it's all like a uh uh this is your brain on crt kind of thing which just yeah. it's just so fun you know like <laughs> the other thing that's going on with uh, a supreme court justice is justice thomas the most conservative fucking uh chief or court justice on yeah. the supreme court his spouse has been implicated in the January 6th riot, which explains why he was the dissenting single vote on disclosing information about <laughs> the January 6th riots oh, and wow. Trump's involvement. So I'm sitting here and everyone's talking about like out of context accusations mm-hmm. that they're making about this woman who seems to be the most qualified human being on the fucking planet for this fucking job. And <laughs> and no one's no one on that side is batting an eye about like the fact that like <laughs> Justice Thomas just keeps getting away with doing stupid and like pretty pretty uh pretty psychotic shit. Yeah. Like uh I was made aware of all that shit that he did with uh not all aware. I'm pretty vague. I was aware that he was pretty involved with the 2000 election and fucking that up. I mm-hmm. get it. There are nine people who could also help fuck it up, but like, come on, he's a component of it. Yeah. Um, the fact that he's uh, a part of this situation and I doubt he's probably going to be removed or there's going to be a heavy push to have him removed. Yeah. Or if they do push to have him removed, it's going to be, Oh God, he wants to, they want to, they want to destabilize the country. So I, I'm not trying to to make this a segment. I just I find it so funny, right? Yeah. Like so fucking funny that uh that this kind of twofer is going on. We're getting a new Supreme Court judge. It's pretty clear that she's going to get it. Manchin, who has been a bit of an obstructionist because there's a 50-50 split in the court. Mm-hmm. Um and the vice president is the additional tie-breaking vote, which means that Joe Manchin can kind of like waggle his thumb all he wants and stall legislation, which is what he's been helping to do. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, he's passed this, but it's interesting that she's going to be a a Supreme Court judge, while this dude who's been on the uh, the court for, I think, nearly 40 years? No, 35? I don't know right off the top of my head this yeah. dude is just doing some super shady bullshit and is still like 
the the leading conservative. No, I, I don't even give a shit. He's the leading member of the Supreme Court, one of the leading members, and just doing shit like this. So I find mm. that this this kind of like duality or doubling of events happening fascinating and worthy of talking about in my week. Mm. On to brighter things. Yes. Um so uh I read about a whole bunch of people getting awfully you know awfully murdered in uh, Game of Thrones. That was yeah. fun. Actually it was really well done. Um mm. Catelyn and if I, I'll I'll go into this I'll be quicker than I usually am. Yeah. Um Catelyn and uh Arya chapters take up like I think a significant portion of the the middle section of this book. Um Arya's going in, she's with the hound, and she keeps talking about like, oh, I'm looking for my brother. Sandor Clegane's like, oh, he's probably at the castle, and she's looking for familiar banners. And like she just randomly like sees people fletching or like cleaning arrows and she doesn't think anything of it. And I'm like, wait, this is the fucking red wedding. There are people prepping arrows. And she, of course, is a kid. She doesn't know that people are about to get fucking murked. So she's like, she George R. R. Martin has her say this or think this or narrates that she noticed this so it's it's a little kernel that we're supposed to see then during the wedding uh what i really enjoy is catelyn keeps noticing things that she doesn't suspect are are uh malevolent or Mm -hmm. malicious not malevolent malicious like she sees the the bride she's crying right but she's crying like noticeably and catelyn's like oh you know it must be because she's nervous and she's afraid uh of losing her maidenhood or maidenhead and you know losing her her virtue and all, or mm -hmm. whatever the term is and you know oh one of the phrase i was talking to him and he was sweating and like uh he's such a sweater like so foul a stench oh and roose bolton kind of just walked out I guess he's not one for parties. And then all while this is going on, everyone's singing, music is going off, and Catelyn is noticing the different songs that are playing. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. We don't know the songs particularly. It's like, oh, there's the, the song of summer and the bear and the maiden fair. It's like, oh, so it's kind of like we're getting like this idea of all these different songs playing, and they're all kind of lazily put together by like amateur bands um and then one of uh rob's right hand uh soldiers goes up to one of the frays and starts talking about dancing with him and he pushes her away and catelyn takes this as a as somewhat of a slight and then is about to walk up to the guy because he's walking out of the uh uh the chamber and all of a sudden, the reins of the Castamere, or the reins of Castamere plays. And I mentioned this earlier, I think a couple weeks ago, like the reins of Castamere is not a song that you just play at a, at a, <laughs> at a, at a, at a wedding function. It's a cautionary tale about uh, a, a lord who rises up against the Lannisters and the Lannisters just fucking melt them yeah uh so all of these cool little clues that obviously were probably supposed to start picking up on mm -hmm. or at least clues that are being laid down that catelyn slowly picks up on that we the reader are supposed to then pick up on absolutely start to like come into come into view like oh wait he's wearing different clothing He's wearing like thicker clothing. Wait, he's got mail underneath his shirt and like all this other shit. And like everyone starts dying. All these characters who like who have had like fun little lines here and there. Uh great John Umber or Great John, the uh one of the Manderleys, uh one of the uh the Mormonts, like mm -hmm. all of the 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 people that the show didn't really take the time to get to know are like people that we have like a peripheral understanding of. They just they all fucking die. Uh, and the same thing pretty much happens. Okay. She grabs one of the nearby frays. Let him go. Rob, walk out of here. And Rob's just like, Mom, I'm I'm dead. <laughs> and she's like, no. No, don't. 
don't say that walk and Frey's like why would I do that <laughs> and yeah. fucking uh, they go up and they fucking stab the shit out of him and uh, Catelyn kills one of the Freys and they fucking slit her throat and it ends right fucking there uh, so that was fucking brutal uh, Sick. Tyrion yeah Tyrion then Davos are next fucking <laughs> oh man that shit is brutal it ends on such a fucking like on a such a fucking bit where it's like it's so abrupt they really 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 wanted that to be a surprise in game of thrones the show but in the book clash of kings it's not heavily implied but there is such a sense of foreboding dread that like something is going to happen Mm-hmm. And 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 like George R. R. Martin actually like puts in the effort of like giving you just a shrivel of fucking hope. Rob is like, oh, you know, it's great. We're gonna. I told you in in the book, he's more concerned with going back to the north and consolidating power than like doing a stupid ass let's conquer Castle Rock thing. So he's like, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna link back up with the phrase. We're gonna link back up with the Boltons once we get this marriage underway. We're gonna go back up to the neck, and we're gonna do like a a two or three pronged attack on Moat Kalen, because mm-hmm. that shit's super hard to by- bypass. We're gonna get the reeds, and we're gonna like we're gonna we're gonna swamp walk our way past Moat Kalen. We're gonna attack him from the north and the south, and like maybe not three prong a two pronged attack, and yeah. you know it's like oh man. It'll be great. They'll never see it coming. Oh, this could work. Rob, you're so fucking smart. God damn it. You're such a great military commander. If it wasn't for, you know, you falling in love with someone you shouldn't have, you would have been great. And then just stab, stab, stab. So, yeah, yeah, I'm recovering from that emotionally. Um, What else? Oh, to wash the um the pain of everyone dying out of my mouth yeah um i've been playing deus ex oh okay so this one isn't the newest one uh i didn't ask for this i didn't uh (laughs) i haven't been playing the new one i played deus ex before i played dishonored and deus ex was my first foray into like an immersive sim and I, I wasn't really jiving with it. It didn't work for me personally. Um, thankfully, I was not deterred. Uh, I played Mankind Divided, the the more recent sequel, and I enjoyed that a little bit more. I never finished it, but it was I I felt it was a little more well rounded, a little more refined and polished. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, <clears throat> I've never really considered giving Deus Ex like a chance. The original two thousand version. I had heard from a lot of people that like it was a fun, great game, but like it was missing a lot from the console version, and there's not really much point in playing it. And oh, okay. I had never had a gaming laptop or, you know, gaming rig, so I never yeah. really thought it was in the cards to play it until you know, uh, H Bomber Guy put out a a uh, a video of it. Yeah, it's a three hour video, but by God, if they're not fucking entertaining. Um, and I, I decided to give it a chance. It was it was virtually free on Steam, uh, and I've been putting in Mondo fucking hours with it, and it's really fucking fun. Um, it does have some of the jank mm-hmm. that uh, like a like of course like a, a ninety late nineties two thousands game would have. Um, the inventory system I think is <laughs> a little rudiment. Not. I don't mean to say that, like, I think this game holds up. Let me, let me say that. I think this game holds up for me. You have like branching pathways, play your own way, uh, you know, uh, solve this in new and interesting kind of ways, fun weapons, so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> inventory is a little weird right off the top of my head. Um, God, I can't. I I really don't have that many bad things to say about it. To be honest, like I love 
one of the things that I absolutely love about the game is like going into a uh, like in an area where I have to uh, uh, hack something, and like there's no mini game. H bomb mm. guy fucking uh, mentions this, and I I I've never really cared for mini games like they weren't really my thing but i've never really existed in a world Mm -hmm. where hacking mini games just didn't happen and i finally played this and by fucking god (laughs) it's amazing it's amazing just like and i didn't know what he meant until i fucking did it but like you 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 go up to a terminal and there's literally just your the login information which you can like interrogate people for get like information on you can find a fucking email that says oh this guy's login password is ball dick ass but 69 420 and then you type that shit in or you can just press hack and you don't go to mini game there's just a timer that says until it's hacked oh and i'm like wait wait fucking what all i have to do is just like be mindful of my surroundings while I'm hacking it. That's that's fucking amazing. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Deathloop did that too with its um hacking bit where it literally just has like a phone that mm. sh- that you know, like you can like look at a device from a certain distance, just press a button and all you have to do is just wait. That's all you have to fucking do. And I can't begin to tell you how weird it is that I like this. Hmm. Like, I remember the first real, like, hacking minigame I actually played, and it was 2007's uh, Mass Effect. And I hated it. And then Mm -hmm. Mass Effect 2 came out, and I was like, oh, this one isn't too bad. And then I've, you know, the fucking, I played Bioshock in, like, 2008, and I was like, oh, well, uh, you know, this is fine, whatever. But, like, I never, like, Watching the video, like, put what I was feeling into words in a way that I didn't think could, like, be a thing. Mm-hmm. The uh, So, yeah, there's that. I'll get off that hump. The, the stealth is a little eh. It's a game that, like, <laughs> that really wants you to try to be stealthy, but, like, really does not want you. <laughs> yeah. To, to, to to have an easy time with it like okay. fucking you're so you're in dishonored right yeah and fucking you have the the tranquilizer bow and you use that shit and like it takes two seconds to tranquilize someone and you know if 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 it's un unupgraded it's like two seconds they stagger and run around mm-hmm. and then they fall in fucking uh in the upgrade version of it or in dishonored 2's upgrade version 2 you fucking bop them with the trank gun and they're down like in the okay. moment they're down before the fucking trank gun even hits them right mm-hmm. in fucking deus ex if you are trained because that's how the 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 character works is that you can put skill points into something and okay. then augments i'll okay. be done with this in a, in a, so yeah, you're good, you're good. yeah um if i'm trained in small guns and i just fucking trank someone it takes them about 10 seconds. Okay. And <laughs> what happens is, is they fucking run around and they know they've been fucking stabbed with a trank gun and they'll run to like an alarm or they'll fucking shoot at you if they see you. Like they don't right. fuck around. If they like, it's, it's a little inconsistent where it's like, you can literally just stand still in the middle of fucking blinding sunlight. And they'll be like, mm-hmm. I thought I heard something. You could be fucking sneaking in pitch black right next to them or like 20 feet away. And if you're like peeking over the fucking crate, they'd be like, hey, I thought I saw someone. But like, I don't mind that necessarily. It's 2000s fucking thief perfected stealth in like the 90s. No one can beat it. Shut the fuck up. But um, I really fucking enjoy it. Like the the idea of exploring a place that you don't have to explore multiple ways to get there nooks and crannies like there's a there's a great bit where 
your character's brother is like, hey, go to my apartment. I've got something for you. And <clears throat> if you're not looking, there's like a little data pad <clears throat> and it says, hey, brother, behind the painting as usual, just count up for, or, uh, 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 just count backwards from four. And you look behind the painting, and it's it's key code. This is the easiest one, but it's like you don't have to do this. And it's like it, <laughs> the painting opens up, the wall opens, and it's like this cool little oh spy area with cool shit and like resources. So you get you get benefits and rewards from actually like exploring and taking the time to like hop on this ledge or go up this ladder and like jump over to this other building. Like I like this. Yeah, I like it. It's not like it's not like there's a, a, a marker that's like telling you like, oh go here, go here. Most of the geometry of the uh the the levels they're small, don't get me wrong. This is two thousand after all. But yeah. like they're designed to be found. Yeah. And designed so that people can find their way. So I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. I'm having a lot of fun. Um the main character looks like they're cosplaying as a white blade, which is funny if you fucking know that blade was white before 1998 but i don't i don't i don't fucking give a shit because wesley snipes is the baddest motherfucker on the planet mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. blade should from here on out be black and all history of him ever being white should be just struck from the record and everyone who knew that put to the sword that is a secret that i think the world should never find out yeah. um but yeah uh i've been playing that it's been really fun uh and i'm looking very forward to seeing how it goes i'm yeah. hearing uh now that i'm on reddit and like looking at shit uh i'm hearing a lot of really fun oh, stuff reddit. about it not spoiling mm -hmm. but still looking forward to you know oh try this or like what do you think of this build da, 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 da. so yeah this is really fun um and yeah, that's about it. It's about it for my week. I watched yeah. um I watched Halo. I watched uh, uh a recent movie uh called The Outfit. The Outfit. Yeah, the outfit. This is actually the one thing and then we can move on. Yep. Um Outfit is really fun. It's actually the kind of movie that you don't see that often on the big screen anymore. <laughs> Um, the outfit is about a tailor, or as he calls himself, a cutter. Um, the distinction is a tailor is just someone who mends and dresses up your trousers, while a cutter is someone who who designs and creates suits and and whatnot. So he 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 has a shop in Chicago, which is a a, a drop spot for anyone who doesn't know. A drop spot is essentially like a a legitimate business that has um a uh, crime affiliation in which people can drop money off in a designated area and then it's picked up a front if you would uh i'm sure there are people out there who's like that's not what that means Just shut the fuck up <laughs> um so the guy runs a a, a front he's uh, a, an exceptionally good english tailor or cutter and a a uh, a little power grab goes wrong, and he's forced to house um, a small handful of of mafioso type fellas, mm -hmm. and a lot of backstabbing, trickery, and uh, quite dramatic reveals take place. Ooh. Um, it's a very small movie. It's in one location. It's in this this set. This um, this uh, this. I I believe the term is bespoke. I, I don't know. Uh, I I see it on the 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 front of the uh, the establishment. Uh, it's very fun. It's played funny enough. The actor who plays the uh, uh, what is it uh the elon musk uh type in mm -hmm. don't look up the yes. the older fellow with the long hair and the teeth yes um he is uh he's the tailor his name is mark rylance he's a mm. phenomenal actor um 
and he plays the tailor in it who's who's absolutely marvelous uh mm. very withdrawn uh kind selectively kind um there's a lot of emotive expression on his face and it's so impressive watching him dominate almost every scene that he's in um so let's see what i was talking about beforehand is the movie has one location a handful of actors and like i said is nothing but just a bunch of really fun like ha i got you i tricked you fucker ha ha kind of moments yeah. um Zoe Dutch or Douche Douche. Uh she's been in a couple things off the top of my head I can't quite remember. Uh Dylan O'Brien from Maze Runner is in it. Uh there are like two or three other actors in it, and that's a, really about it. Um The movie is literally just a suspense thriller, but I can't like I cannot tell you how pleasant it is to see like this small budget suspense thriller in the big screen or on the big screen it's fun it's fun to watch it's not like this big action movie it's not this big like cgi extravaganza it's just fun i'm glad that like there's this movie with tension and you know funness to it it's like it's not overly violent. Like, yeah, there's blood. Yeah, there's implied bullshit going on. But like, it has like this older, uh, schmaltzier kind of fifties uh, because it's set in the fifties too. It okay. just has this kind of vibe that I I really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I I I actually wanted to take you to it. I we just kind of went on it, went to it on a whim, and I I had heard about it and i didn't really know too much about it i'm glad i didn't know too much about it but yeah i would love to show you love to show you the outfit it is one of the movies i really enjoyed as of late i'm sure if i said it's one of my favorite movies so far i would be like uh uh-huh. <laughs> you just watched this movie like on january like fucking 9th and you said that was your favorite movie so permit me some time to look back and see what uh, what we had yeah. but still great absolutely fun stuff i don't think it's like a perfect movie there's some gripes i have with it but like that's not going to take me out of like just what a fun time i had and the fact that i got to see a movie like this on the big screen with solid performances by everyone yep yep Yep. Yep. That's good. Um, yep. Good week. <laughs> Damn fucking straight. Cried. I drooled. I laughed. Good shit. See dude. what I did there? The, yes. the, the gaming part made me, made me yeah. drool. Because it's brainless. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, topics? Fuck yeah. Um, Sick. What did you want to start off with? Um, let's see here. My notes. Ooh, Arena and its economy oh, solution. Yes. Yeah. Please. So, <clears throat> well, I gotta sit up for this shit. <laughs> I got some things to say. Um. So you, I've talked about it uh, in the podcast. Uh, how I'm unhappy with Arena, where like. Yes, they're doing digital only cards, but the biggest issue has always been the economy where like it's really difficult to get cards, right? Mm-hmm. Um like you get what are called wild cards, which is you can get any card you want of that rarity, right? So if you have a a rare wild card, you can get any rare in the game. Uh, if you okay. have a common, uncommon, vice versa, uh, uh, depending on what rarity it is, that's the type of card you can get. Um most decks, winning decks, have an average of like sixteen to like let's say sixteen to like twenty rares okay. on its own. Um and rares aren't easy to come by, right? Um 
And the thing is, if you're running like a multicolored deck, most of your lands are going to be rares. Um, and then obviously all the good cards are usually rare too. Um, so that's like the big problem. Like there's not enough wild cards and that's always been the issue since arena started. We're like, dude, like wild cards is just too hard to come by. Like, you know, like it's like, I can't build decks quick enough. Like I can't mess around. Like I can't like, unless you throw in hundreds, close to over a thousand dollars worth of, you know, investing into the game when a new set comes out, you can't build decks with the new cards. You just don't have enough wild cards. Um, right. And that's always been the issue. Um, like if you're a free to play player, like you have to just play so much. And even then yeah, you're the grind. Yeah. And even then you're limited because there's a certain point where you can't earn you can't earn stuff, right? In a certain, so you can only earn X amount in a certain day. So it's kind of like, well, fuck, that sucks. Cause, you know, like if I'm trying to get things, like I'm kind of limited because, like, yeah, you have to wait until the next day to continue the grind. So you can't just grind all day. Um, so wild cards issue. So that's always been the topic, and the the community has always wanted to hear from you know uh the company like what are you going to do about the economy you know the economy arena economy they're like and they finally said okay we're having a we're going to have like a stream for it cool um basically what they said was and this is me just paraphrasing they said uh, like a dusting format where you know um most other um trading card games online like arena is like a hearthstone a runes of to runeterra uh, or legends of runeterra um you know all those online games um uh they have what is called like a dusting format where basically like you dust cards that you don't want anymore okay and what happens is you uh you dust x amount so each card is worth x amount of dust and you kind of just dust cards that you don't want and then eventually you can use dust to create cards you do want um and that's just how it goes right and it's easier to get cards you want because like let's say you play a deck you're tired of it and you just dust all of it and then most of it you can build a new deck with most of it not including mm -hmm. all the cards you accumulated you know, while playing too, so you can dust the cards you don't want, you know, or whatever. So it's not that hard to make new decks. Um, so they're saying that dusting doesn't work with arena because it's more of a collection thing. So you want to collect all the cards. So we don't want you to get rid of cards to, you know, get cards that you want, which is mm -hmm. kind of... I, I don't know. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, I'm if they're, you. if, how do I say, um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to stick to that point right now. That's, that's point number one. Um, when they're saying it, it's a based off of collection and then it's, it, you know, you want to keep the cards that you get. Um, I got into, uh, so I used to play Madden back in fucking, I guess a decade from, you fucking now. loser. Um, but what really got me into Madden was there was a. Uh... Right now, I'm, now I'm remembering how I got into Madden. Okay, so I got into Madden because uh, my cousin's like, "Hey, this is a super easy platinum trophy. Fucking, let me let. I'm gonna let you borrow it." I'm like, "Oh fuck yeah, dude!" So I played it. It was super easy, and they so Madden introduced this game mode called mutt which is madden ultimate team and i was like i don't fucking get it it's like oh but you know it's part of the trophy thing so i was like okay i'll try it out why not and so i started up and basically you get cards of players and you build teams uh off these cards and i was like oh that's cool so you can kind of like make your own team you know what i mean like you, you don't um like you don't you know how usually madden you pick a team and you play with their players so this one you get cards and you use those cards to 
put them in the positions that you want and then you play as that with that team so obviously they have stats so they're same as like you know common uncommon rare and like you know ultra rare whatever you want to call it or super rare um and depending on their skill stat level like is their um is their rarity um and so you you know you you crack open packs you get some cards like oh look oh i got this player and sometimes they have like special versions of players like if they did like really good in a certain week they have them with like better stats or like they bring in like you know uh, nfl legends which is like you know retired uh um players you know they, they make a card for them so you can have them in your team so it's like it's really cool right i'll like, say oh this is dope um but they had an incentive of like collecting cards uh basically they had like like a little tab called collections and if you collected um certain players or certain cards and you put them into your collection um at the end you actually get something out of it uh what you used to get is like a specific card of a player like uh like for example i can think of like there is a collection of like uh players or notable players who came from a certain college and so if you collect all of those cards the outcome is you get a special like rare super rare card of a like a really good player uh that came okay. out of that college and you get like coins at the end and it's like oh that's cool you know it's really like a lot of coins right so you can buy more packs and i was like oh that gives you an incentive to keep the cards and to put them away in this collect in your collection and because you get a reward in the end right yeah where in arena there isn't anything like that it's like oh you have three copies of this card and then you get, and then in, or yeah four copies of this card it's like okay what can i do with them nothing you just have four copies <laughs> get fucked yeah exactly right it's like okay and it's like so what do you mean collection like this, there's no collection bait like i get it i have four copies of this card but I, this is like a common card and there's multiple like um uh, versions of this card right mm -hmm. like it, it's the exact same card with the same name maybe a different uh artwork on it but it's i have like 20 copies of this card you know it's mm -hmm. like why do i want all this why can't i just get rid of them so i can get a card i actually want so like with them saying like oh magic space like we want collection that makes no sense you know what to you me. need harry huh you need scrying power yeah yeah um, to be able to see what you get ahead of time. It w that would be nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's that's my little tidbit when it comes to the collection, right? Um, okay. Um, and so they said, okay, we heard you out. So we're gonna have a way for you to get wild cards. It's like, okay, that's cool. Like now you can buy wild cards. Okay. Uh, it's fifty dollars for. 20 wild cards. <laughs> Fucking. Whoa. Sure, you can do it. <laughs> so, Here's another gig. And we were all waiting, like, okay, $50, like, can we use coin? No. So we have to use, like, can we use gems? No. Nope. We, we have to actual money. actual $50 to get God. the wild cards you want. Like, wow. Like, Nothing screams more than that saying, I'm just taking your money. <laughs> like I just, you, you know, my opinion, I, I yeah. think everything, everything, everything yeah. should be based on like the quality of how you play. Like I get mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. oh, that's not fair. Some people just play better, like fucking whatever. But if you put in the time, you should earn some kind of currency. If you do the grind and you fucking i don't know fucking lawn mow however many fucking lawns or do however many fucking paper roots if that's mm -hmm. even a fucking thing anymore in this country <laughs> or this fucking planet like and you come into school mm -hmm. with a fucking with a nice ass bicycle or some brand new fucking shoes and everyone's like oh fuck this guy mowed a lot of lawns or fucking did a lot of fucking paper routes there yeah. That's where the fucking excitement is. Your community mm -hmm. 
sees the fucking effort that you put in to what you were fucking doing and all the hard work you put in. Not like, oh, Daddy Morbucks gave me a check and I was able to get a nuclear weapon. Yeah. Like, yeah, whatever, dude. Fucking, this guy fucking went all the way to fucking Fort Bragg and killed a bunch of people. I know Fort Bragg doesn't have nuclear fucking weapons. I just couldn't think of it off the top of my head. Go fuck yeah. yourself. Anyway, yeah, no, I, I get you. I fucking, I hear you. Yeah, it's, um... Uh, that that really, um... That's a lot that of would chat my ass, too. Yeah, where yeah. it's like, um... Hey, it's... we're addressing the situation. Pay for it with cash. Solved! Yeah. It's fucking oh man that was Don't uh fucking come to us for more bullshit yeah that one was um i don't know man that was fucking that no was... i i hear you i i'm not i'm not a fan of that either yeah it's uh like yeah it's just nothing of like when most of your most of the people who play the game are saying like yeah you need something different like we have like like because the thing is most of these players have played other card games and mostly some of these players have completely transitioned to other fucking card games um and so they see what the good and bad is and they're like okay well this game does it this way and it's just so much better um yeah it's just i think yeah I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree yeah. with that. Like you, you lose. I know there's like a, a net amount of people in total or gross, whatever. The fuck. Mm. I fucking, mm. Like I get, we've talked about this before. It's like, you know, the people who are like, you know, like you and me who are actually, I think legitimately complaining are like, we're not the target audience. And I think people in the target audience are probably going to complain too. But like, mm. I wonder like with, you know, that sweet spot where it's like, Oh, we're losing people because they're aging out or they're losing interest or whatever, and we're mm. gaining those new younger folks. There has to be that equilibrium number. I'm sure that number is probably in flux too. Like, oh, cool. You just instituted something that's super fucked up and it's pay to win. And even then, even if it's pay to win, it's super fucking expensive. Yeah. Like, that's. Uh, I'll say. I'll say that for people who like make magic content, right? Like they they make, you know, YouTube videos and all this stuff and and magic is their work. Um mm -hmm. it's made it easier for them, for sure. Oh, of course. Right. Um which is nice, but it's still one of those where it's like, dude, like, that doesn't help, like, the, the person who likes playing the game. Yeah, like, you know, so doesn't it, doesn't it, a... it doesn't affect me, but, um, because I don't play Arena anymore, uh, for this specific reason, but, um, the people who, um, still play, you know how to do, there's, uh, uh, digital only cards. Um, mm -hmm. so when they change cards, with no warning, just like, oh, you know what? These are going to be, we're going to make Fuck these slightly you. worse, and we're going to make these slightly better. Um, you don't get reimbursed. They just change the cards. And they're like, so if you have them, you're shit out of luck. Like, if you spent wild cards on them, you're shit out of luck. Like, if you're... Wait, if you have an actual physical, well, not physical, no, but no, if you no, actually no. have un, in your possession a digital card, and it changes, like, the card that you own changes... Yeah, the digital version of it. Like so, like if yes. on if if on arena, like I have a card and I built this deck around this specific card, you know, and I spent about sixteen to twenty rares on this deck, and then Wizard of the Coast says this card's too powerful. We're gonna make them worse, and now your deck doesn't work. Like it's bad deck, right? Like is a it it turned for to it turned from a competitive deck to a casual deck. Huh. All right, and now you obviously you're kind of like, well, that fucking sucks, and now mm. you're just like, I just wasted all of my wild cards on building this deck. 
and, and now it's due to us and now it's yeah now it's awful and what do i do now i can't build a new deck i i'm stuck with a shitty deck so that's the part that a lot of people are complaining about because they're just like mm-hmm. well what then like you're not reimbursing us if you make it worse like you know because it's it's to like you you know they made the argument like you know if you what if we make the card good are we going to remove a wild card from you guys like like well no but it's still really fucked up right <laughs> like like it's still we really, care just not enough yeah like it, it's still really fucked up that like some of these people who grind hard to get these wild cards to and they see that oh there's this deck that's really good you know um i want to play it and then they you know grind use up all the wild cards play it for a couple days and then all of a sudden oh yeah we're changing it and now they can't play the deck because it's bad like they can play it but it's not a good deck anymore it's not competitive you know so that's the big thing with arena right now um like i i'm no expert in this i don't know what could like what would work like people who like i played hearthstone and and i mm. I, I physically use the um the, the dusting system and it, it's it's cool it's cool i like it it's fun uh, because yeah you can destroy cards that you don't want and then you can use whatever's left over them the dust of them to get cards you do want you know so if you have a bunch of cards you don't want you get rid of them or like i said before you have a whole deck that you don't want to play anymore you scrap all of it and then use what's left over of it to make a new deck right so in arena you can't do that you just you you have a quote-unquote collection and you're just stuck so if you don't have the cards you have to have wild cards or just keep cracking open packs to till you hopefully get the card you want you know and again that's it's not a guarantee so Hmm. it's just something that's going on in the community that is bothering everyone and a reason why i stopped the the yeah because there's times where i wanted to build decks and i was like oh man i want to build this deck because it looks like fun it's not a meta deck but it looks like a deck that i would enjoy and maybe i can tweak it so i can enjoy playing it um but the problem is a lot of the good cards are rares and mythics right and i don't have I don't have a plethora of wild cards to throw when I, you know, cause like you've seen me, right? Like when, when I get in the mode, when I'm building decks, I can build oh, yeah. four five, six, ten decks of all You're variants and the fucking MacGyver. Yeah. And they, 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 they synergize and all the shit. Like I can get into it and I can build decks online. But the problem is like the issue when it came to paper magic is that cards are pricey i'm like fuck like i would love to build this deck but this card's really expensive you know some it, sometimes it's just one card or it's multiple cards right that can be pretty pricey and i'm like i'm not gonna spend you know like usually when it comes to decks that i'm not gonna play like it's not like my main deck um i don't want to spend more than like 20 bucks <laughs> over it you know oh yeah i, I would no, prefer I, to spend around you. 10 you know like 10 dollars per deck you know but uh sometimes the cards are expensive and i can't build them right so i th- my first thought process was hey arena's free to play i'll build up some stuff i can build decks and i'll have a good time and when they did nope, the wild yeah I, fucking more. I wasn't well even before the wild card system just wasn't working and it didn't work for anybody no no everyone's main thing was it it's wild cards don't work because there's a lot of cards that I don't, like I said, there are multiple copies of the same card in different sets. So then you're stuck with 16 copies of the same card. Why do you want 16 copies of the exact same card? Mm-hmm. Just let me have four copies and let me scrap the other 12 so I can get cards I don't have. But, like, I, I get the whole collection thing. Like, if they made a. Like, if they're like, hey, if you get every card in this set, we will. Oh, you know what? It actually. They actually do it on uh, the other um, digital magic for, uh, platform, Magic Online. 
On Magic uh-huh. Online, if you have every card in a set, like every common, uncommon, rare, mythic rare, land and everything, um, and you trade those cards in digitally, they'll send you paper versions of all those cards to you. Ooh. Yeah. So, if they made that to as an assembly, there's something. Some if, if they want to make it into a collection thing where you you want to keep the cards, you don't want to dust them, then make it worthwhile. Yeah. Right? If they're saying, there's all right. Something. Yeah, like, if, if I'm going to, again, I'm going with, because I have a card that I have 16 copies of. And it's because they got, it got reprinted in multiple fucking sets. If they made an incentive of keeping the four copies, even though there's you own 16 copies of it, you, you keep the four copies of every set because if you have every card in, in a certain set, you get something like hella gems or hella coins or, you know, um, something, right? Or if they do like what they do in a... Um, and magic online like hey we'll give you like if you have four cards of every card in, in the set we'll send you you know these cards and paper like you know like a magic online they go away right if you um turn them in you turn them in you don't have access to them digitally anymore if you mm-hmm. if you did that on magic arena i think people will be okay with it like wait i get uh i get physical copies of these cards like yeah that's cool I, i'll i'm down for that Right. Yeah that that seems rewarding, actually. Right. Like at that point, I'd be fine. I'd I'd be totally okay with it. Um, but that's not. It's not. There's no incentive of collecting. There's nothing at the end of the road. It's just this long collection. It's like okay, that's cool. I'm not getting anything out of it. You know, mm-hmm. people collect physical copies because it's a little more rewarding. You have a physical copy of it, and um. You know, sometimes those cards go up in value by a lot, you know? Right. Some of the cards I bought um, a while back are worth, you know, 10 times its value at this point. And then I'm like, dude, that's fucking cool. Like, I am I have it for collection purposes and I don't want to sell it, but it's cool that it's worth 10 times its value, you know? Um, but the digital, digital version, it's there's no extra value on it. It just sits there. And... A lot of those cards I don't touch. I don't play with them because the, a lot of them aren't good. M- Wizards has come out and purposely said we make bad cards on purpose so players know the difference between a good card and a bad card. So if we have in our collection bad cards, why would we want them? If we know they're mm-hmm. bad, why would we want them? You know, so. <sighs> Maybe they're a very picky collector. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know what I mean? Like, if you're a collector, that's fine. But the other big issue is they come out with sets fucking left and right now. Yeah. Like, they have, okay, so now they have Alchemy, right? That's a digital only uh, uh, sets. Uh, they brought in Modern Horizons 2. Uh, they brought in the original Modern Horizons. Um, they, they're bringing in cards uh from older formats or older sets just here here's a plethora of new cards into uh arena like okay that's cool um but then they bring in commander cards and all this there's so many cards in this fucking game now which is dope right like that's fucking cool that's what we want we want all the magic cards available in this digital platform but they're not making it easy to make a collection they're not right. The, the packs aren't cheap, right? Um, the, there's so side note. I used to play uh, Magic Duels, which was basically uh, what Arena came. Arena came from Magic Duels. Duels they stopped uh, supporting and they went off and started doing Magic Arena. Um, duels is a little different. Um, I'll do a little. Uh, like how duels worked it was basically um okay. in your deck you can only have one mythic rare right so or, well if if you're going to put a mythic rare in your deck you only have one right 
like uh, uh, a Liliano the Veil, you only own one. You can't own more than one mythic rare card. Like that mythic rare card. You know how like usually you can have four copies of a card? Well, in duels, it's just the one. So if you have Liliana the Veil, that's your only copy. So you, you can't have more than one in your deck. Okay. Uh, and rares, you can only have two. Uh, uncommon, three. Common, you can have four. So that's how it worked. That's how the, 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 the deck building worked in duels. Which was interesting, right? Because if you saw that they had a mythic rare and you got rid of it, you knew they're not going to have any more. You know what I mean? Like you, mm-hmm. you can't be like, okay, maybe they have another one. You know, it, it did take me a while to figure that out. <laughs> Cause, um, again, it was, I thought it was just magic, the gathering, right? So I thought they'll have four copies of a really good card. I, you know, so, um, that's how that worked. And it actually told you, uh, how much of the cards in, in the, um, in the set you have so it told you like your collection percentage so whenever you so you couldn't get more like in arena like if you get more than four copies like if you get a fifth or sixth or seventh copy like that's just a dead card right um it goes into this thing called the the vault and if you get enough progression in it you get some wild cards but it's like a ridiculous amount of progression it's it's stupid but in duels, it was like, okay, you own these cards. Like, you own three of this uncommon. You'll never pull another one of these because you already have the three from this set. And I thought that was mm. cool. Because it's yeah, like, it, because it made sure you didn't pull. Yeah. Yeah. Pull like it, yeah it, it made sure you, like, like, at some point, you will have 100% of the set. So if you're yeah. looking for a specific card... You will get it at some point. You may get lucky and get it earlier, or you may be very unlucky and get it at the very last pack. But you will get it. Um, and the cool thing about it was that they, when they sold packs, so similar to duel or duels in arena, um, packs are a thousand coin, right? Um. But in duels, they had sales where it was like 50% off. So you can buy them for 500 coin. So you would be able to, you know, buy two for, for a thousand. It's like, oh, it was a great deal, right? So you would save your coin, save your coin, save your coin. And then once um, they would have a sale, you just fucking buy all the packs you can, right? Um, but in Arena, they don't do that. They don't, they, like, they give away packs here and there, right? Um, but they don't have sales on packs. Like their sales, wow. their sale on packs is like you get a ten percent off. Basically, you get you get you get ten percent off. It's like okay, that fucking blows. <laughs> you know, um, it's just there's a lot of things that are just like I get it. It's a game. It, it, they're not gonna like look at what you're, I want, you're, right? You're a- no 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 hold on you're you're a player like i get it like there's only so much you can expect as one person but like yeah if that's a i think that's kind of shitty and i think there are some mm-hmm. issues that like the community as a whole has that if <sighs> <clears throat> that if they are willing to bring up then i don't see the issue with the company that's concerned with <laughs> uh meeting its 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 community standards or yeah. trying to give things that the community might enjoy i don't think there's a problem with that mm. yeah i mean it's just um i don't know it's one of those where it's like i, I get that it's not gonna be a hundred percent just for me you know what i mean yeah. so like i i get that and it's just annoying that this game could be great. Like there's things that I want, like four player commander would be great in that. Right. Cause it's like, you could build that. The thing, the thing that really got me is that it's free to play. It's fucking free. I can right. just download it and start playing it. It just sucks that like you're saying, it's kind of like pay to win because like the cards yeah. that are good, the cards that you want 
aren't easy to access. And if you're building like a hundred card deck, be it, you know, 40 of them are going to be lands. But if you're playing a multicolored deck or even just a single color deck, there are really good lands that you would want in your deck. And those are going to be rares, right? Hard, um, to, hard to come by and if you don't have that much money. Yeah. And especially if you're playing a dual colored commander deck, most of your lands are going to be rares. Hard. Um, and that doesn't include your commander, which is going to be a rare or mythic, most likely. Um, and, uh, and all the other really good cards that you want in your deck. So it's just, it's just, that's really annoying that like, I would love to like, ask, like tell people, Oh, get magic arena, play a little bit, get some cards and we'll play some commander. But it's like, Oh wait, they don't have commander. They don't have four play commander. They have only one V one. And I've kind of come to accept that, you know, before that, like, this isn't a platform for me. It's not made for Harry. It's made for Wizards of the Coast to make money. And I that's why I stopped playing it. Because it if 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 you look at it like that, I think you're gonna you're gonna die dehydrated and hungry and mm. uh without any happiness in your soul. Um <laughs> but I can understand how that 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 sentiment does put you off, and I can yeah. understand how like it can really, really, really hurt the quality of something, right? Yeah, or your enjoyment of it. Yeah, but, like you want to play because you like magic, and you aren't necessarily feeling the effects of it yourself. Mm. Then. Yeah, fucking keep playing if you want but i mean if if it's just something that like puts you off it, it obviously does and i i think you're yeah. legitimate to, to feel that way yeah yeah it's i don't know like it's just my little tidbit and how i feel and i hope they can fix things to bring me back but if levels out a little bit yeah but there's plenty of people still playing it, especially content creators. I think that's the, they know they'll make money because content creators, like they have this community and they have to stay involved somehow. So they're going to yeah. put their money into this game that no sells, you know, like they're, they, or brings viewers, right. Or, you know what I mean? Like if your content is based around playing magic, you're, you have Good to play you. Yeah, yeah you have to play arena dude and and to be able to play arena uh well you have to have the cards and to have the cards you gotta get wild cards and now they're charging you 50 dollars to get what you want you know what i mean it, it really blows but mm -hmm. people are going to be paying it people are going to be paying 50 dollars for wild cards um and i and like i said it's going to help them because it's better than spending a thousand plus dollars trying to get a um, wild cards are the cards they want in, in buying the packs, right? Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's good for them and they know they're, they are, um, what's the word? Um, they're catering to them, right? Yeah. Like how do we keep them keep playing, but also make money? They're make like, some well, money. Yeah. And, and it, it's okay. It's a business move and it's fine. Like I know it's going to work, which is the part that sucks, but it's going to, you know. yeah, it, of course it is. It's like, oh. but it doesn't mean that it doesn't suck when, when you take it into that, like, Hey, yeah. you know, why can't, um, why can't we do like a subscription service and all of the cards are free? Well, you can't, can't make that much money off of that. Then, mm -hmm. Like you have a fixed amount that you can make, it's dependent on a guaranteed subscription. Yeah. So. Because yeah, um, it's funny because uh, Magic Online um has a um like it's not in game, but like outside serv third party services, actually you can rent <laughs> decks from them because the cards in Magic Online. Uh, are sellable. You can sell your cards. So there's an online market too. For Magic Online, not Arena. 
Okay, gotcha. So Magic Online um, is the older uh, digital format or digital platform for Magic, and those you can you can you buy you can buy individual cards. So if you want a specific card, you can go ahead and buy it. Um, and if you have a card that you don't want anymore, you can sell it, and then you know you have money. Um, it's just so they have services where like a third party uh service where you can rent a deck like you pay x amount like a day or whatever and then you turn it back once you're done so like people can like rent like if they're getting ready to play in a tournament they can rent a deck on magic online play the shit out of it preparing for the tournament return it and then go play it and uh, with physical cards later which you can also rent there are services that do that but you, you like let's say you have the cards you can so you get the practice in and play competitively with players on magic online on the on on that with that deck because it's harder to play a variety of decks in person than it is playing it online because you're playing so many different decks online um so there is that so the the only thing is it's a third party service. It's not magic supplying that. So then that's, that's the, that's the problem. So, but you're right. A service of like, Hey, you pay this much, you get, you know, uh, you, you get to play whatever card you want. You know? Yeah. Like I, I get it. Like it, it's boring. Why don't you, why don't you, why don't we create these new, new ways of generating like, uh, not scarcity. Yeah, yeah, no scarcity. We'll we'll make it so that like mm-hmm. certain people can technically just cut through any kind of uh, you know, formality that is put into you know actually playing the game. Mm-hmm. So no, I no. get you. So that's that's it right now. So that's that's the the issue uh, th- that what's come out right the fifty dollars for wild cards. Um, moving on, uh, Tom Cruise in the MCU. I um, uh, <laughs> so yeah. from what I've heard, he was supposed to play a Iron Man from a different universe. So I I don't fucking know. He they. I don't know how legitimate it is. I don't yeah. know if it's like the internet being the internet, but way back when people, it said that like Tom Cruise was considered for the role of Tony Stark. I don't even know if he fucking auditioned. I don't even know if he actually voiced any interest. All I know is it's like one of those like internet things that I'm too fucking lazy to look up, whether it's actually true or not, mm-hmm. or wonder if I even have the ability to check whether that's true or not. Uh-huh. But like, Ever since we found out about the Multiverse of Madness movie and, like, the opening up of the multiverse, everyone's been like, ah, wouldn't it be great if fucking Tom Cruise did a fucking funny-ass cameo as Iron Man? And then everyone else was like, oh, well, what if we get fucking the actor who did Reed Richards? And everyone's like, oh, well, what if we get fucking Ben Affleck? So, it's clear that Patrick Stewart is going to do fucking... uh, Professor X at least one more time for the multiverse. Uh-huh. Um, everyone keeps saying, oh, that dude who's flying with like a gold gem on their forehead or something, if you slow it down and enhance the video, looks like white suit Iron Man with like a gem on his forehead or like some kind of power module mm-hmm. or something. Uh, and that's supposed to be Tom Cruise, except like other people are saying, no, it's uh, Rambo, one of the Rambos as uh, Captain Marvel. Okay. So we'll see Tom Cruise when his fucking five foot six ass is put in a fucking movie yeah. that has the MCU logo on it. Um, I'm not even gonna fucking entertain that shit. I'm, I'm too old and too tired to care about Tom. Thaddeus Cruz in a fucking Marvel movie. Yeah. Uh, now, to be fair, I think he would be cool as a villain. Just give uh-huh. him like one. No, no, this is perfect. Hear me out. Hear me out. 
you get him really angry without him realizing that they're going to be recording anything and just record any tirade that he does and then just CGI in a space background with like a space hadron collider and just then the Avengers are superimposed in the foreground and then he just there you go that's all I need fair enough no no j- jokes aside <laughs> um, I don't think I could really imagine where he would fit into the the MCU, all things mm-hmm. said and done. Um, everyone wants him to do like the Iron Man thing, and like I'm fine with it, I guess. Like I could see it, sure. But at this point, it's just like I don't, I don't need it. I don't care. I really don't. Um, it'll be interesting if I see him. I'm looking forward to seeing like if anyone. Any if anything actually comes of Tom Cruise in the MCU, if he doesn't do the the fucking Iron Man thing, I'd be interested to see him do like a one off um fucking villain. Seriously, mm-hmm. be one of the X Men villains, be fucking one of the Fantastic Four villains. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I I can't think of a performance or I can't think of a role where I'm in love with the idea of Tom Cruise being in it. it like I like Tom Cruise, but yeah. like. I don't think he's at his best when he's working on a green screen. I think he's at his mm. best when, like, you know, he's fucking riding on a motorcycle for real or hanging out of a fucking plane for real. Like, the appeal for me, there's not enough meme worthy material of Tom Cruise, in my opinion. There is of, of, uh, of someone like Keanu Reeves, right? Like, that would draw someone to a uh, an MCU movie. Oh, okay. Like, oh, Keanu Reeves? Oh, he's playing fucking Squirrel Girl? Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll fucking watch that. But, like, Tom Cruise, I don't think is a particularly, like... He's pretty good at doing one thing. Like, the charming spy. Okay. nowadays like he was great as like Lestat he's great in, like a whole bunch of other shit but like he's really committed now to doing like the last couple of Mission Impossibles and yeah. like anything that makes him feel alive and away from the Church of Scientology mm-hmm. so like the idea of putting him on a green screen hurts and goes against all of his advantages as an actor mm-hmm. in my opinion okay just my opinion. I think the MCU format doesn't lend itself to someone like him where it's like, oh, hey, you know, let me do a like a stunt or let me do this or that. Like there's that behind the fucking scene footage thing of like uh, Tom Holland running around a green screen and like he does his own stunt. Like Doug wrong, he does a fucking front flip and like yeah. he bounces around a bit. But it's like it's all a green screen. He jumps on a trampoline and does one front flip and that's it. Yeah. Like. I see how these movies are made where it's like they have some really impressive like stuff going on that I think could be just a little more impressive if they decided to do stuff without a you know fucking green screen. Yeah. Besides the point. Um it's the same thing with John Krasinski as uh as fucking Mr. Fantastic. Like I don't I don't get like the appeal personally. Mm-hmm. I thought the idea was fun because uh because fucking uh him and uh uh Emily Blunt are like a cute couple and they kind of fit the bill. Emily Blunt yeah. I think would make a more interesting like Sue Storm than uh fucking Chris and C would make like a read. Yeah. Uh but like uh... There are so many other interesting people. They're like, there's Patrick Wilson. There's the fucker who played, um, yeah, yeah, Patrick Wilson, the guy who played fucking Night Owl and Watchmen. He's in a bunch of other fucking mm. shit. He's in Insidious. Like, he's a great fucking actor. I oh, he was fucking Ocean Master and Aquaman. I'd fucking love to see him as Reed Richards. I think he'd be fucking great. Yeah. Fucking uh, who else? Uh, who's that fucking actor from Bridgerton? Uh, that dude. Fucking. Who's the fucking actor from uh, The Haunting of Bly Manor? Him. 
Like, so many better fucking actors. No offense to John Krasinski. I like him, but, like, the funny guy, the funny, likable guy thing is the only thing I've seen him do. Um, he... Well, I mean, we've we've seen The Quiet Place. Um, yeah, he's don't get me wrong. He's a he's an effective director. I just like I haven't seen that much range from him, other than like the dad, right? Like the really, I'm probably like lumping him into one, but like yeah. the funny nice guy dad. That's what I think of when I think of John Krasinski. Yeah. I don't think of like the fucking loan shark or like. I don't know, the alcoholic with, like, the gambling problem or, like... uh, Right. Like, I think of John Krasinski. Like, that's it. And I don't think fucking Mr. Fantastic is John Krasinski. I think Mm -hmm. the the couple is cute. They can cosplay it all they want. But, like, I I don't want, like, internet memory to get in the way of, like, oh, well, this person might actually do a good job is, like... Mm -hmm artist man on the planet who's like kind of not full of himself but like he's kind of too smart for his own good mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. anyway it's like I see all those fan casts of like uh, characters and there are some that I think are pretty good and some that I think are not but like the, the ones that I think are almost kind of like jokes now are like Tom Cruise as Iron Man all, like variant and then like John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as the half of the fucking Fantastic Four. No mm-hmm. one fucking talks about the thing or fucking Human Torch, but whatever. Hey, I actually... get, um Chris Evans to do the Human Torch again. Oh god, that'd be so good. <laughs> oh, could you imagine that fucking that like double cameo where it's like they're going through the multiverse and they're fucking like clicking through multiverses like fucking elevator doors. Yeah. And fucking strange opens like Steve? He's like, no, my name's Johnny. What? And then the door fucking closes and the fucking door opens again. And then he's like, Johnny? No, wait, what? Strange. My name's Steve. What? Oh, dude. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. They, 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 See, that, that is gold. That, mm. that is in keeping with the fucking, uh, who are you? Uh, uh, wait, no, what is your name? Mr. Or no, I'm Mr. Wait, what is that joke in Doctor Strange? And who are you? Oh, no. Who are you, Mr. Uh, Doctor? Mr. Doctor? Oh, it's yeah. strange. Yeah, who am I to judge? Like, that shit, that was the best fucking joke in all of the MCU. Yeah. All the I don't give a fuck. I don't care. The the Dark World as a movie was a close second joke. Yeah. But like fuck. That what I came up with is like a close like 99% number mm. 2. Okay? okay. Yeah. Not nah, yeah, I feel yeah. like But like I I don't know. I um I do enjoy, um, I know I keep talking about fan casts and how bad they are, but I mm. actually really enjoyed what I've seen of uh, Nando V movies. I've talked about him before. Mm-hmm. He knows these characters. I don't, I know jack shit about these characters other than what I've, I've enjoyed of seeing them before or like the occasional yeah. comic. Um, but he seems to know these characters inside and out. He doesn't seem to go for like the most obvious character choice he Mm -hmm. went with one like cringy choice uh for mystique not a personal fan of that choice but like whatever i don't give a shit like it works i just wouldn't have done it but he does fan casts of the first class of x-men and then he does a fan cast of all of the x-men villains and i think for the most part they're all perfect okay and it's not like it's not like oh we need Marlon Brando to play Apocalypse and we need fucking Morgan Freeman to play Mr. Sinister it's like he obviously spends a lot of time watching media television film and he has an uh, at least does his research with actors and uh, kind of pulls them like almost whole cloth like 
I would never have considered these people just because like I don't have enough time to watch just fucking random shit all the time. Yeah. But like great castings. I recommend I think you would like some of the castings too because they work, at least for me. Okay. But yeah, fuck Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. Oh, you know what? It'd be perfect. No, no, no. Actually, you know what? I know the perfect casting for Tom Cruise. When 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 the Avengers kind of dies down mm-hmm. as like a, a, a reputable marketing source and they start to replace it with like X Men and Fantastic Four, which is what they're gonna fucking do. I I bet you. Yeah, the I fucking, can see it. They moved in pretty late with the X Men and all that. Once Fantastic Four and X Men come in, they're gonna kind of take like the franchise like weight, and the Avengers are gonna kind of be put a little bit off but whatever that's my opinion um what was i fucking saying when to bring in tom cruise yeah perfect fucking make him william striker a religious zealot who fucking uh mutilates uh fucking mutants yeah there you go perfect all you have to do is change the scientology bit to like crazy christian there you go Mm, got it perfect and I I'm pretty Warner. certain I'm pretty certain that William Stryker is short, so <laughs> Um he is now. <laughs> he is now. Um <laughs> Yeah, right. There's your fucking <laughs> fan cast. Not um Alright, so I didn't watch Halo, but you did. Talk I to me you about hate. Halo. Yeah. Um okay. I've said my piece no i haven't i'm gonna keep talking um i've said the kind of like dissonance that kind of goes on with the franchise right Mm -hmm. where it's like the games are almost entire almost entirely about like oh hey you know humanity's united against you know this alien threat this these religious like zealots who want to mm-hmm. kill us for no other reason than the fact that we're human right yeah. and there's this other civilization that existed hundreds of thousands of years ago and we need to figure out like what the purpose of all this shit is was right mm-hmm. so uh fucking then the books are like hey we need to invent the spartans to um to eliminate rebels we need to uh create surgically alter and mutilate and possibly yeah we're gonna kill a bunch of kids to get like murdering machines that are just gonna just gonna absolutely just blink and you'll die rebels Mm. i love it it's it's so good there's such a there's such a tonal fucking whiplash from playing the game where it's like oh And then fucking reading some of the books and they're like literally the montage in every mafia movie where someone gets shot in the face or yeah. like fucking garroted in the back of the car. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one really, really, really totes the line, you know? Right. I'm kidding. It doesn't. No. Um, so let me be clear. Um, Halo, the TV series, seems to kind of... um blank slate everything um it seems as though uh the only way i can really uh explain is the the show uh firefly and the movie serenity yeah they're both connected serenity is a sequel to firefly but serenity has to inform viewers who aren't fans of the show what the movie and the environment is so they kind of gloss over a couple things they kind of retcon a couple things this show is doing that like to the max um all of the characters that you kind of know and love are kind of reset in the year 2552 Mm -hmm. um 2552 is the main time when halo one two and yes, I know Halo 3 is in 2553. I don't give a shit. We're sticking with 2552. That's Let's where see. the main crux of the games is. Halo Reach, Halo ODST, 2552. Um, 
Halo 4 and Halo 5 tape back like five or six years fucking later. Fucking infinite whenever. I don't give a shit. Like 26, 25, 60. Um, within the chronology of the, the lore in the books, 25, 11, or 10 are when the, the kids are abducted because, oh no, the the UNSC and the UEG are actually pretty fucking terrible organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then 25, 25 is when the first planet is attacked by the Covenant. Okay. Uh, they attack the planet by accident because they are looking for Forerunner tech, the, the fucking people who lived like thousands, hundreds of thousands of years before. And they end up finding out that it's a human colony, and that's when the first conflict starts the war has been raging on for now technically like 35 years like whole two whole generations or almost two whole generations have been in war oh, wow. um so this kind of compresses all that time it's in 2552 you know your main character has the same armor that they've had in the later games uh we're kind of introduced to everything that like the main mad scientist character is doing like right then and there on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, we're introduced to Captain Keys, who's a prominent character, and his daughter, Miranda Keys, another prominent character, kind of at the same time and all that bullshit. Um, and Cortana is implicitly introduced. I'm going to explain all this in a moment. So I just wanted to give everyone an idea that this is not Halo the game. They are kind of redoing a couple things and retconning a couple things and compressing the timeline for some stuff um, to make it fit for a general audience and are more than willing to do a shitload of fan service at the same time. So I won't I will not fault them for any of that. I will I will complain a bit about the execution. So let's see. Let's start with the story. Mm hmm. The story takes place on this outer rim planet, this refinery planet that is, I believe, trying to secede or it has independence from the, the UEG, the main government. They're bitching and moaning about, oh, how evil the fucking military wing is and, oh, the the, the Spartans are propaganda. They're, you can't kill a Spartan. They're they're bioengineered super freaks and whatever. And then while that's fucking going on, a couple of kids are doing fucking drugs uh, in the hills. And the main character at the moment hears some bullshit, goes over the ridge and sees a, a Covenant vessel, doesn't know that they're the aliens because fucking whatever. Uh, and she's running. She runs back to her friends. They're all fucking stoned out of their mind. She's trying to get them to leave. And as she's trying to get them all to leave, they all get fucking massacred. And she's mm-hmm. running back to the, the fort. She warns everyone, uh, despite everything, the Covenant come and just wreck everyone. Um, then the Spartans come like like it's fucking nothing. They kill all the elites. Everyone's dead except for this girl uh, whose father's died. And uh, the Spartans then go to investigate the reason why the Covenant were there and find a a Forerunner device. But because time is kind of compressed and all that, and we have to introduce non-fans to what the game is, they don't really know what it is. It's like some weird, could it be Covenant tech or whatever. Um, And it interacts with the master chief character john or the main character of the franchise in a weird way uh they pick up the girl they pick up the device they're heading back to to reach which is the primary uh military planet halo i know they named her who would have thought well (laughs) fucking they taught this son of a bitch how to drive holy (laughs) shit (laughs) <laughs> um so she wakes up the UNSC's like hey um we know that you're a rebel but we also know that the covenant are kind of fucking around in uh, uh rim space or uh, the outer rim 
would you mind broadcasting that uh, we're trying to help? And she's like, no, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember the fucking reason, but they have the Master Chief attempt to kill her. And oh. he's sitting down talking. I know, right? He's sitting down talking with her and they have like this little rapport and uh, a fucking thing comes on his visor and it's like, kill, kill, kill. And then he's like, ah, fuck, I can't fucking do this. So he fucking disables the ship and yeah. uh, escapes with her to somewhere. I, I really I really cannot tell you how like how lost I am from such a simple plot. Like, <laughs> just gone. Like, my mind just wandered in so many different places uh, for this. But um, yeah. that's the main story so far. Oh, the Master Chief takes his helmet off. Excuse uh, me? First time. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Why? I don't know. Is um, the Mandalorian or something? What the fuck's going on? I'm, you know what? I, I'm sure people on the internet are unhappy with it. I'm fine with it. I'm, I don't think the show necessarily could behave the same way as the game. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, well, they won't, they, um, let's see. I feel like first and foremost, they gave this show a pretty big budget and it still feels like a kindergartner directed it. Wow. Um let's see. You know when you watch a sci fi movie and it like it looks like they just use like random <laughs> like, like I was like, before you even said anything, I already imagined it. Yeah, you'll you'll like (laughs) you'll like you're watching a Star Trek episode or some like like shitty two thousands show, and they use that weird like ladder that doesn't have like the same like grab spots or something in the same spot, or they're using some. That's this movie. Mm. Like the first portion of it, they're in this like orangey, muddy, coppery like what looks like like a fort it's like a town fort and like everything just reeks of like contemporary like air quote sci-fi looking and then they have fucking like uh jeeps the joke i made a couple weeks ago and like ak's and shit i i get that they're like low tech and they're like scrounging to survive but this is like an example of like well let's invest as little effort and fleshing yeah. these people out because they're all gonna fucking die um i don't really know but it felt almost like they were framing these folks as kind of like not bad guys but they have this bit on the intercom or like the tv that they're like gambling next to where it's like there's this sleazy guy who's acting as an intermediary between the UN sc or the ueg and the rebels and i'm like Mm, it only took me until about like a couple years after reading the books that I realized that the UNSC is technically the bad guy mm. and they're being framed as the good guy. Um, I really don't want the show to make that mistake either. And the show like is showing that the UNSC is bad, but like it's not helping that they're doing the halo stuff at the same time. Right. And I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. I'm sorry. I, I, I want to be as succinct with this because I know you haven't watched it. I know you don't care about Halo. I don't either. I just, it seemed like an interesting show. It's got yeah. a really big fucking I, budget. And like, like, I would I, be remiss if I didn't talk about it. I yeah, feel like. I was intrigued. Like, cause <clears throat> I, I didn't grow up playing Halo. Right. I, I didn't, I so it would have been cool to see a uh a show that kind of like did so I can like watch a show know the story plot of the game right but yeah if I don't know see I guess it, if the, yeah go ahead I'm sorry if they do a good job of telling the story 
but have like really bad like dialogue and all this other shit i think it's worth it for me to watch it because i'm always more involved in shows when they have really good world building when they have like a really good interesting world story like i'm yeah. down for that um because i can the get world past building, yeah the world building i think is a little iffy in the first episode okay i do think again what i typically like to do here is i like to comb through the first episode yeah. and then wait until the series is done before i like make my piece Mm -hmm. But the world building in this, I thought, was really weak for a first episode. For, like, right. a show that was meant to, like, catch your eye, it kind of did it. Like, oh, yeah, there's super soldiers, and, and the shady government wants you to do, wants them to do shady, sh shady stuff. But, like, he's not going to do it. And there's, like, a forerunner artifact. And, like, the aliens want it, too. And the humans want it. Like, that's interesting, sure. But, like, it just went about it in, like, a very, like, blase, like, eh kind of way yeah. um i will say so I, I i gotta i gotta do like a a positivity sandwich okay okay uh the beginning actually does a really fun job at showing how fucking like difficult <laughs> that's not even fair. how devastating the covenant are in the game like the war is essentially a losing like it's a lost cause for the mm -hmm. most part the um the war has been raging for like 30 something years and the covenant pretty much like glass plasma blast like any planet they come across and it's like that tips typically is like 80% of the UEG's like planets okay so the whole kind of tone and feeling of the show or the games is like we're kind of hanging on by a thread. Um, mm. And, you know, the Master Chief is humanity's last hope. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> the first game, it's like, hey, we're escaping this covenant who's kind of kicking our ass and everything's on the Halo. Then Halo 2's, you know, we get an idea of, like, you know, the state of humanity, mm. more or less. Um, but you never, I don't, I don't, I never really see the like the visceral like how dangerous are the covenant like it's clear like they're winning they have superior technology but like there's this great moment where she's running to go like save her friends because she sees that these fucking things are attacking and like the plasma rifle you just hear like this shot and they in the game it's like the plasma rifle's slow and clunky and whatnot but like in the film what I think was actually or the show which was a solid choice is it just it's 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 like a regular fucking pistol with speed and it yeah. just rips through this fucking one person and they go into there's some fucking brutal shit in the show so far like mm -hmm. in the first fucking 20 minutes but it rips through these kids and she's fucking running the rest of them are running and as one of them is running it just like another shot goes off and it just rips through her legs and another one goes off and it just fucking is like annihilates her body and she's dead like yeah. she gets the fort and she's calling oh we need to fucking blah, 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 blah. and <clears throat> the covenant break down the doors and like their little fucking 21st century AKs are firing at the these elites and it's just the elites I don't know why they just use the elites mm -hmm. I guess it doesn't fucking matter but they're firing at them and the shields uh, aren't like dissipating in the game it's like you shoot at them for a little bit the shields go away and you just fucking whack attack them, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's not happening. So it's like, it's clear. And these things are like 10, 11 feet tall, right? Like, right. it's clear that these things are physically imposing. And that's something that you never quite see in in these Halo games necessarily. Like, how frightening it would be <laughs> if these big high-tech alien dudes just fucking went up to your house and wrecked your shit. And I think the opening assault does a really good job at that. Um, mm -hmm. The intro of the Spartans actually isn't entirely terrible either. Um, I have some gripes, uh, some tiny little major issues that I like to go over, I but like introducing them, <laughs> introducing them 
you know, as like everyone's getting fucking wrecked. Um, now that I'm saying this, it kind of defeats the point. Like everyone dies and they kind of come in and they're made to look like they saved the day. Um, but like they kind of come in and they, they wreck everything. Their weapons are like higher caliber and shit. Mm. Um, I'm I was I was a little disappointed because it's like it's clearly just meant to show off the Master Chief and a couple other fuckers, yeah. uh, three other Spartans. Um, it's clear that they visually have like pr- uh, like specialization. Like one's the comms one, one's the sniper, one's the heavy. But they don't really do one of them is sniping, but the other mm-hmm. ones don't really do anything different. Like the other one has two pistols and they like really try to like badass that up. And the other guy's like this big, heavy, like armored one. And that doesn't, but he doesn't really do anything heavy. This yeah. master chief is the one who's just like running and gunning the whole time. Um, the armor wasn't entire, like the, 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 the props were not too terrible. Um, no, that's not fair. The props are good. Um, I have one glaring issue with the Master Chief's mm-hmm. armor, and it's that under his helmet is like this weird, like Velcro flap. Okay. And it doesn't look good. It looks like someone put like <sighs> the idea is that the Master Chief's armor is essentially meant to be like a walking astronaut suit. It's it's like mm-hmm. it's battle armor. He doesn't have to take it off. He can survive um ex- extended periods in space with it. Um it's essentially like impervious to most damage, like the armor parts. Okay. So what I get the impression is cuz like the suit comes up to his neck and chin and then the helmet comes over that, right? Okay, um, yeah. So you're seeing the issue where it's like they can't put an actor in something that covers like his neck in a way that doesn't look weird without like his five o'clock shadow peeking underneath the helmet. Mm, so okay. they did like this flap thing that covers like his chin. It just doesn't look good. Um, <clears throat> they get some solid shots of him doing uh running some like extraneous movements and it doesn't look like his fucking armor is flailing all over the place but one of the things that bothers me is they changed the dimensions of some of the props Hmm. Uh, this is this is a minor thing it really is but like when you look at like how everyone is holding their weapons it looks weird because they do that thing where it's like they're obviously wearing big uncomfortable bulky armor that's probably like i don't know like part styrofoam part like fiberglass yeah and they have to hold this rifle and they're holding the butt like on top of their shoulder instead of like tucked right okay and i was like oh that's kind of weird like this six foot seven dude i think that like pablo schreiber the guy who plays the master chief in this he's like Mm. fucking tall um it's kind of weird like you know the dimensions that are kind of like does it mean or does that look like normal size because the master chief the spartans are like seven feet tall yeah like the genetic modifications make them fucking huge and then it was only until i realized that the female main character when she's in the pelican with the master chief and they're having like the i don't trust you thing she takes the same rifle and it's like Half her fucking size. Oh. She literally looks like a fucking a toddler of a toddler holding like this gigantic thing. And I was like, man, because the the whole point is that like <clears throat> most of the weapons that the Master Chief would hold that are human yeah. are going to be smaller. So I would have liked if like the weapons looked a little smaller, but they at least like felt comfortable to the actor. Mm-hmm. Um, because most of the Covenant weapons look perfectly fine. Like one of the characters has like a plasma pistol, and the thing is fucking huge. Because a fucking grunt, despite how it looks in Halo, is the average size of a fucking human being. Mm-hmm. Like five foot, like yeah. nine, six, six feet even. Um. So yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, 
I I've talked to you, I think when I talked to you about Boba Fett, I was talking to you about the Cad Bane guy, the the Clint Eastwood like blue dude red eyed. Yes. Um and I felt like because he is something that has never existed in live action and is a cartoon, I think changes should have been made. Some changes, like I'm I'm fine with changes, like Right. I feel like practicality would have been way more practical. And I feel like maybe some changes to Master Chief's armor to fit the practicality aspect would have been fine. But they yeah. really wanted to do like the let's make it look like it's Halo armor. Um which eh, you know, I've I middling success. Um yeah. let's see. I don't want to get into like, oh, this character was introduced poorly because it's, you know, this person is this way in the game. Um, but that's difficult. Um, Natasha Mc... Oh, God, I hope I'm saying her name. Natasha Mc... Elhorn, I think her name is? Mm -hmm. She's been... I think she was in the Truman Show. She was in uh, Designated Survivor with uh, Kiefer Sutherland. She's Catherine Halsey. <clears throat> um, she is pretty undefined as a character at the moment. Um, she, in the books and in the, the games, is kind of like a mad scientist. She's has this outwardly cruel uh, and short and curt demeanor, but she's a very thoughtful person she's hyper intelligent she's the one who came up with the spartan 2 program she hand selected okay. every single kid as as a spartan she vehemently defends what she did to these these kids okay. um the actor who plays jacob keys is okay he comes across as kind of like a uh a, a, a military kind of bureaucrat i guess in the the games, he's only in one of them, but he's kind of like the charismatic uh, corn pipe smoking like admiral captain kind of character. Okay. Um, God, I'm trying to figure out how to like say these people's like positions without like comparing or I don't know. He's fine. Again, like this is the first episode, so I want to see like what they bring to the table. At the moment, the actor who plays Keys, I think, physically fits the role. Like, he's, like, this big, gruff, like, dude. Um, the actress playing Miranda Keys, uh, Captain Jacob Keys' daughter, and Catherine Halsey's daughter, again, is, is fairly undefined. She's defined by her, like, her dissatisfaction with her relationship with her mother, who is described as emotionally distant and okay. not you know is emotionally distant um oh man what else uh that's about it at the moment uh the the dialogue for characters feels a little stilted or jilted uh some of the characters in the spartan armor some of the the uh the motion actors or the stunt actors in the armor seem a little, I don't know. Uh, they're not quite hitting their mark and the voice actors, or at least in Pablo Schreiber's case, uh, some of their voice lines seem a little jilted. Like they're trying to do military speech, but it, I'm going up that hill now. I need mm. a sit rep. It's, it just, it feels like force. It doesn't, oh, I'm going up to that hill. I need to sit up on this guy right now. Mm -hmm. You take him up to sick bay. I'll go to like it. It just feels like <laughs> the first thought that comes into your mind. And keep in mind, the first thought isn't the best thought necessarily. Right. When you think of I've been trained my entire life as a super soldier. Like eh, it feels a little weird. Um, all in all, uh, It's fine. I'm looking forward to a a, a couple more episodes. Uh, I want to know where they go with this because, again, 
they seem to be kind of doing like a different timeline-y kind of thing. They're introducing characters a little later. Uh, There's plenty of time to see where these characters go. Uh, I just... It just felt lukewarm, in my opinion, if Mm -hmm. I could. Like, as a fan, I think this was probably not the best place to start whatever Halo TV series you were trying to do. Um, I understand why they did it. Like, like, oh, you got the Forerunner stuff, you got the Master Chief stuff, and then you got, like, the Covenant War stuff. I would have started, honestly, with, uh, if I had the choice, because... You know me, I like to be fucking a whiny bitch about it. Mm-hmm. Um, after the first wave of... Let's see. I'm pulling it up right now. After the first wave of books for Halo in the mid-2000s came out, 2007 marked the introduction of Halo Contact Harvest. Okay. And... This is like a 300-something page book. It's from the guy who did the first couple of books, uh, The Fall of Reach uh, and First Strike and Ghosts of Onyx. Mm-hmm. Ghosts of Onyx was my favorite of the franchise. Funny enough, I've only read two or three of these. It did it when I was a kid when I had nothing better to do. Um, Eric Nilland wrote uh, or co-wrote Contact Harvest. And Contact Harvest, for anyone who doesn't know, like I said, is... Uh, the first planet attacked by the Covenant, which okay. initiates the, the Human Covenant War. And you can get all of the same kind of movie or show that you mm. would want that you could do with um, Contact Harvest. And you could follow the character of um, of Sergeant Johnson. Okay. Because that's where he's introduced. Or not introduced. He's in the game in 2000, 2001. But Contact Harvest follows the character of Sergeant Johnson when he is, you know, on the battlefield. Because he's one of the first couple of people to actually engage the Covenant. Oh, okay. And, for anyone who doesn't know, he's also a Spartan. (gasps) Yeah, what they don't tell you is the Spartan 2 program... There's a Spartan 1 program in the 2490s mm-hmm. when they did the same thing with a bunch of kids, except it wasn't, like, genetically modified. They just used kids, like the fucking psychos that they are. And mm-hmm. he was one of them. They killed a, he killed a guy at, like, fucking 35 million miles away with a fucking unaugmented sniper rifle. Or something along those lines. I can't fucking remember. But it's implied that he was one of the first, like, chemically altered like spartans from like the 2490s anyway um really interesting it has a great like losing battle vibe there's a lot of like brush warfare and like it's really fun uh it's probably the funnest read for me um because it doesn't have all the spartany overtly forerunner stuff Mm -hmm. which you can show later right the thing is is that like I just feel like they're going in like the most obvious Halo-y route, and I I don't I don't think that was probably the best move. Mm-hmm. Um, the show really, really wants you to know how awful the UNSC is, while at the same time the intro is literally the Master Chief's naked back, which shows like the product of years of like mechanical chemical and biological like torture that he had to go through Mm -hmm. and it's like oh no this intro shows how badass he is cool that's great so like i don't think the show is really going to be committed in one direction or the other and the thing is is that halo contact harvest could have done that because there are some pockets of people who do not want to be helped by the UNSC in contact harvest. Okay. And it just, it brings about, I think a more interesting dynamic other than like, Oh, these people that the Spartans kind of like 
uh, superficially try to save in the beginning of this episode. Yeah, they're all dead anyway, so there's no real point to like the uh, the cool we saved everyone like superhero landing bullshit that they do. Yeah, contact harvest I think is the perfect spot where this could have started because you don't have all of the excess like bullshit. You can lean into that later on. Right. But yeah, it just fucking I don't know. I'm just being a little bitch about it. That's I'm interested, like I said, in seeing where it goes. Um, I like the uh, the performances enough. I'm looking forward to seeing the next couple of them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they they introduced. I forgot to mention they introduced something with like a human covenant member, um, mm. which was kind of odd. Um, we've never seen that before, and I like the idea. Mm-hmm. I just like. I feel like that idea just belongs in a different story Mm. because they look like they have a whole bunch of half-hearted attempts to do like halo stories, but I just want a story that has halo in it. I don't want a halo story. That's why again, contact harvest. It's a war first contact war that just happens to be about Sergeant Johnson and you know, fucking other bullshit. But anyway, that's it for me on I again I'm looking forward to seeing the next couple episodes, but uh I'll keep you posted as soon as the show is done. And you can have my fucking login information. Okay. So. Um on that note, an occasion as Dracula. Oh fuck yeah, dude. Have you seen the photos of this fucking this genius? I have fucking not. Handsome man? Look the, look this shit up. I'm gonna look it up. Nick Cage. Dracula. I also have to check out the uh, the new movie. That he's in oh yeah, when is it out? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm still looking to for that fucking movie with uh, Josh Hartnett, man. Oh right. Well, that's uh, not coming out for a little while. That's yeah. that's um, that's uh, that's a fucking Guy Ritchie movie. Oh, here we go. It looks so good, right? The oh. suit, the fucking eyebrows, the lips. Nicholas Cage is a uh, Dracula. Yeah, apparently it's called Renfield. It follows um, Nicholas Holt, the guy who played uh, uh, Beast in the later X Men movies, mm, mm-hmm. and the uh, I I Zombie, not I Zombie, uh, Warm Bodies, the romantic yes. zombie movie. Uh, he plays Renfield, so it's going to follow his X points, and then working for uh, Nick the Cage Dracula. Mm. Oh, it looks so good. I love it. I don't give a shit. Nicholas yeah. Cage, you're a darling. He really is. But yeah, uh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to the uh, the other thing that uh, he's in. I don't know, man. I just... I fucking... I'm really glad I saw Pig. Pig was such a fucking movie that, like... Whenever I think about it, I'm just so pleased with myself that I watched it. Good shit, dude. I, need to I recommend watch you too. I know yeah. you haven't. I, it is an immensely enjoyable <clears throat> film. <clears throat> yeah. It's one of those movies where it's like, oh, Nicolas Cage is um, doing a movie where he's looking for his lost fucking pig. And you're just like, dude, come on. Like, just give up. Like, right? Because it's yeah. such a weird, like, title. It's such a weird premise. Like, of course Nicolas Cage is going to... And then you watch it and you're like... Oh fuck! This is actually really fucking good. Yeah. Good shit. All right. I am the down. Good. Yeah. Oh. I think that's about it for me. Shit. Yeah, me too, man. It was a good fucking session. Um. Fuck. Obviously, no. Uh, no Warhammer in the background today, but we are going to do some kind of game. Just something. I think a little less, um, uh, something a little more mindless, just maybe not mindless, but like maybe something that doesn't require so much forethought or planning yeah. or strategy, strategy. <clears throat> yes, very much so. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ready for the outro? All right. Fuck yeah, folks. We love doing this and we love that you love when we do this. That's why. I would like you to take your right hand, 
put it down your pants and through your right leg hole and grab that mouse and like and subscribe hitting the mark with harry and mark on youtube also you know while you're at it do the same thing for the uh the channel guy named harry that is where our wonderful harry the bear records and streams when he is feeling in the mood that's true <clears throat> like and subscribe that something something algorithm something something boosting viewership we're going from one to two baby i can tell you that it's anyway true. if you want to get in contact with us personally if you want to tell us about your hopes and dreams uh boys you've kissed scary stories no it does not uh, you want to just get in contact with us, you can hit us up on our email hitting the mark 2020 at gmail.com and if you want our moment-by-moment college football breakdowns. <laughs> college football. <clears throat> you can hit someone else up on Twitter because we talk about nothing. It's true. Mark doesn't uh, keep up with it. But you can see that I am willing to add anyone and be added by anyone. At capital H, capital T, capital M underscore podcast. Once again, HTM underscore podcast. Folks, I'm going to get Harry next week for the shade he just threw me. But in the meantime, <laughs> you have a wonderful night and we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Alvita Zan, assholes.